intro. You want to just scream like new cameras? <laughs> 4K! We're professionals. We're really We're good. good at this. We're you want really to say good. start of a new year? No, that's We're a good idea. There we go. Off, there we go. That's a, yeah. yeah, good idea. It's 2020, Kyle. What? It's a new year. Yes. And you're looking awfully sharp in this new 4K. That's what? right. We got brand new cameras. They hopefully won't stop recording anymore. Until they die. Until they die. Until the battery dies. But they hopefully won't stop recording anymore. They're in 4 fucking K. Oh, it's glorious. Glorious 4K. Glorious. So now when I zoom the camera in way too far in post, it won't be quite as pixelated anymore. Hey, we've already reached our resolution. Yeah. Our New Year's resolution. Oh! We've got a resolution! Oh! What? Oh! Hello and welcome back to the Good, Bad, or Bad, Bad Show. We watch terrible movies and tell you if you should too. I'm your host, Mr. Brian Shilligo. I'm joined, as always... By the other host of Good, Better, Bad, Bad, Mr. Kyle Hinton, who is classically trained. Kyle, we're starting off 2020. We were trying to figure out what to do. We were going to go across the pond. We decided this. to be invaded by the old British Isles and do back-to-back -back episodes <laughs> to lead off the year over, uh, like you said, in jolly old... Well, not one's in England. Yeah, the, one, other, the other one's in Ireland. Ireland. Uh, and we're doing... This first one was recommended by a fan... It's a movie that dares to ask, what if Fatal Deviation was a horror movie? <laughs> and made even less sense. And made even less sense. It is Red Canopy. <laughs> Kyle, this movie was recommended by some crazy person on Facebook or something. And this, this the, the, I don't know who recommended this, but this is the same level of recommendation that we got that for Billy Owens, where it's enough of an intrigue that we watched it, yeah. and now we hate you. Yes, <laughs> very much. This movie, I, I scrolled through it because it's all on YouTube. You can watch it on YouTube. I think it's legally up there. I don't, or like legally up there. I'm not sure. Like by the company or I something? Think. Like that, or by whoever has the rights? Right. Who, I th it seems like it, but I could be wrong. Uh, it's labeled as a horror movie. Which I guess it technically is. It's also on IMDb labeled as a horror movie, which I guess it technically is. Kind of. It's a yeah. It's a nothing. It's a nonsense, <laughs> insane movie. Like it's 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 everything and nothing. Do you um, think it feels more like it was a short film that they desperately tried to expand to a yes. feature? Yes. I mean, ninety percent of this movie is a, a, a crazy person running around in the woods seeing ghosts. By himself and like falling down hills. Oh! And his hair is cra this main he's got character, crazy. This man's crazy hair. You know what's the, the most mind blowing fact about this movie? The guy who wrote and directed it isn't the main character. No, he is in it though. He is he? Yeah, he's the guy running in the woods at the beginning looking for his dog. Oh, is he? Yeah. Okay, okay. I was like, because oh, that makes sense. But I was like, this feels 100% like one of those movies where he should be the writer and director, <laughs> like this no. crazy main character. But he's not. Um, but he's an interesting individual, and we'll get to him. Uh, this was written and directed by Ian Weeks, who you said we see in the film as the dog uh, the dog owner. Um, very, very upset that his stuffed animal got murdered. Oh, my God. <laughs> They were like, let's pour some fake blood on this stuffed animal. It oh, is no. The most obvious stuffed animal that, like, stand in for a dead animal that I've ever seen in a movie. And when I say stuffed animal, <laughs> I don't mean, like, you know, taxidermy to, like, professional. No, no, this no, is no, straight no. up stuff with, like, like <laughs> synthetic cotton. Like your six-year-old child's toy is the, yeah. And this is like a carnival gift. Yeah, 100%. And they're like, yeah, that looks great. Perfect. We'll, we'll go with that. Uh, the movie opens, though on a, a title screen uh, that has 
the Karate Creed or something. I don't know what that is, but it pops up and it's like, I come to you with only karate, with empty oh, hands. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, it, and then it just says the Creed at the bottom. And then after that, it says, it explains what a bokeh is or whatever. the, a, the a Baku? Or Baku or ba- whatever. Yeah, whatever. The wooden the, the training sword. Wooden training swords, because they say that word a lot in this movie, and I think they were worried people are going to be like, what is he saying? So, and the opening title card, it has like the, the Webster's dictionary definition. <laughs> this this of was it. definitely, they, they went through at least one test screening. And they were like, okay, this person didn't, what, what, what do we need to tell people? What the, what's a Baku? What, 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 are we, what, are we talk, what are you talking about through half this movie? I guess we'll just add that we'll in. Add that into the, yeah. And it's like, that's not the most confused. I would, I, so much of this movie is nonsense. The fact that I don't know what your wooden trading sword is called isn't a major issue for me in this film. Hey, who's next? But uh, so after that opening title card, we get our first of several stock photos with CG clouds composited over it. To, like, be the establishing shot, like, oh, instead of getting a helicopter footage or paying, you know, buying some stock, like, footage of the English countryside or Irish countryside, uh, because it's the English one, Mm -hmm. the English countryside, they just took a picture and they put clouds animated over the top of it. Not, not, okay, so that is not the worst CGI in this film. Oh, no. They, it gets significantly worse. It's not the worst. It's just the laziest. It's, it it's, is the laziest. Well, this one is at least like a perspective shot from up. Like, it looks like it could be a helicopter shot. Literally later in the movie, there's a shot that is a Google Maps satellite picture <laughs> shot that they put in the movie and then put clouds blowing oh, over the top of. And that's was, fantastic. Great. Thank awesome. you, movie. And so we, we enter the English town of Weldon. This is where this story our story takes place. I thought it started off in, in London at first. Well, he or does, but we get the opening yes. with the dog is in Weldon, um, which is where eventually the rest of it. Yeah, he's in London. Um, but it's some guy looking for his dog. We already talked about the dog. Uh, but it's haunted. He's hearing voices. And he doesn't know what's going on. And then he sees his dead dog. And then a ninja appears. <laughs> yes. <laughs> now, for th- I, while I was watching this, I honestly thought just because like of how the the dress the 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 ninja garb was that the the pants were Adidas track running pants they probably are they probably are this there's that's just something that caught my mind but, yeah but it, it's yeah it's straight up just a ninja with a sword yeah going All right. after that yeah and he finds but he finds a red i guess canopy is like a maybe a british word i think this is what the movie title is is that this or maybe that's later with the trees yeah, it's, it's some sort of cloth but he finds like a scarf like a red scarf which no, it, I, it's symbolism I assume or something but like he finds it and he's like what is this and then uh, a, a, a person with a katana slices his him in half yeah. basically Um, and I love the the, the scarf. Him. Yeah, the scarf flies up in the air and lands on the katana blade as it comes down, so that the person who just killed him has like the scarf, like almost like blood. It's this movie thinks it's way more interesting than it is. Well, here's the, if we were just to have that opening shot and that was the entire film, that could almost work. Yeah, almost. Yeah, the dog's really the shitty, dog's but. terrible, but. Uh, and then, so then we get the opening credits, uh, and during these opening credits, we get a scene that, at current, we have no idea what it is. It's some dudes breaking into a house and seeming to murder people. There's zero context currently (laughs) for it. It just happens, and you're like, and then we move on and never talk. Don't talk about it till like, the last 20 minutes of the movie. And I was like, what was that? Okay. But then, so then we're introduced to John, who is our main character. His name's John something. John, we're starting. Right. 
Yeah, and this guy is um, oh my the god, tired. His accent's very. Uh, he's unique. his his name's Carl. The actor's name is Carlos something. Ramos. And, Ramos. Yeah, and he. I don't know what his accent is, but he it, has. It sounds almost like it sounds very Eastern European. I'm sorry, it's not my fault if he can't block me. You're supposed to respect everybody's strengths and weaknesses. This is only training. Well, it's good training for him then to have a better opponent, make him work hard. Also, his hair is wild. His hair, at least for much of the movie, later on he eventually puts it like in a ponytail kind yeah. of. But for the beginning of the movie, his hair. Is like this. It, it, it's it sticks all out over the place everywhere. He reminds me of Coach Steve from Big Mouth the whole time. Out of <laughs> well, it's like he was. He's also mildly balding. Yeah. At this point, and the entire time I was like, "Is that is that Art Malik from True Lies?" Yeah. So he's he. We cut to his karate lessons. He's doing karate, and he's just too goddamn good at karate, Kyle. Oh he's God. just too talented. Yeah. yeah! But even before we get to that, we were introduced to him by like him in the changing room putting his gi on, and he like puts has on a black. Yeah, he puts on a black belt. Like, oh, oh, I can't let anybody see me with this on. Oh, I'm actually a green belt. I'm just a green belt. Which, yeah. Yeah. John, we're starting. But, uh, yeah, so he's like kicking everybody's ass, and the, and he wants to compete in this tournament that's coming up the next night. Mm. And but the coach or his sensei is like, "You're, you're not ready. Your body is ready, but your mind is not." Or whatever, <laughs> basically, is what he says. I want to ask you about the competition tomorrow night. Go over my tactics. I have an answer. You. You're not ready yet. What? I am ready. What do you mean I'm not ready? I've never felt more ready. You've seen my work over the last three weeks. Exactly. Look at what you did earlier to Ted. So he tells him, "Look, here's what you got to do. Uh, you gotta, you gotta go to this little English town and go into the woods, go to Weldon, go, and like and find and yourself. Just, yeah, you're gonna find, you're gonna train here, and that will somehow like help you. See this village? Small woodland is the perfect training ground. Just total peace and quiet. John, I want you to go there, practice everything you know. Well done." That you're from. So, uh, so then we cut. Uh, there's just a little scene. I love this because it's the the this movie has a lot of that like crazy melodrama that that people who are bad at making movies thinks makes their movie interesting and dramatic, but it's just silly. I'm competing tomorrow night. Like after his his the the sensei is like you got to go to this town and and train or whatever. It, it cuts to him, uh, John, in his kitchen that night, washing. Yeah, <laughs> oh my God. Him talking to himself talking like to a himself fucking. Like... It, it just adds for, further that he's like not on oh, the level. He's no, way crazy. No. He's like, I can do this without going someplace. This is stupid. And then he's like, slams a dirty and bowl on the. <laughs> like, like he's being defiant. No. I don't need to go. I can win and beat them all. And yeah. then what happens in the next scene? He goes. He goes. Yeah. I can win and beat them all. He literally, because he ends the scene with going, I don't need to go anywhere. Slam. And then it cuts. And then he's going to the place. <laughs> all right. Fantastic. I feel like we're missing a scene, but all right. And then he, so he gets to Weldon and this guy... On top of just how he looks in general, his outfit in this scene. Oh, wearing a Hawaiian shirt. <laughs> I, I thought it was, it's like a Hawaiian shirt, but I think it's like the skyline of London on it or something like that. But he looks like a tourist. Yeah, he looks like an American tourist. Yeah. What? <laughs> and it doesn't fit him, like the buttons are pulling on it. Uh, and he's got these jeans on. He, it's amazing. Also, the editing. This is where the editing really starts to come into play. When he gets to this town, he's looking around. He has a map. He runs into a guy, doesn't, whatever. And then he sees a shop. And then the movie either forgot to shoot stuff or something because he looks at the shop. Then we get an insert shot of the sky, like of, of an aerial shot. And then it cuts back to him on the ground having, I guess, come out of the shop because it's just a close-up of his face. And he slow-mo turns around to the camera. And then it cuts and he has stuff. And I was like, what is that? It's the most... 
Turn around. It's the weirdest <laughs> editing I. I I was like, I could, I was already not following, and it only gets way fucking crazier. How from much here. do you want to? And, and this film is it a, is it eighty yard? Can you tell me where the rooker is? That little forest you have here. You don't want to go in there. <laughs> You're not going to give me all the voodoo hocus pocus as well. What is this place? Some of it is. Some, you, not you, all. Well, yeah, you can tell the parts that aren't. But when they try to do ADR, it's doing that thing where they didn't do a really particularly good job at it. No. And now they're cutting around the fact that their ADR is incredibly off. Excuse me. Sorry, guys. You should look where you're going. Yeah, otherwise you end up on your ass. Um, and so he's trying to find the forest, right? Which he has a map for. Yeah. He has a map to get to the forest. But he still has to ask people for some reason where the... He wants, but people are like, you don't want to go there, yada, yada, yada. Can't go to the forest. He literally runs into a guy who's like doing his best Obi-Wan Kenobi impression. Yeah. The cane guy. <laughs> yes. Literally, he goes, you don't want to go in there. You don't want to go in there. And I was like, Obi-Wan? <laughs> like, what are, we, what are we doing here? Um, uh, but then uh, he, he's like, no, I do. I don't care about your voodoo hocus pocus or whatever he says. You're not going to give me all the voodoo hocus pocus as well. Um, and then he gets jumped because he bumps into uh, some guys. Okay, and this this ragtag team is These guys. <laughs> incredibly unintimidating. No, one. so unintimidating. They reminded me of the henchmen from Big Lebowski. Yeah, otherwise you'll end up on your ass. Okay, so we take some money, you have fun, you, uh, we call Shadifa. Where they're like, uh, <laughs> the nihilists or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Um, but at least the one guy with the glasses reminded me of one of those characters, like Flea or something. Pay for that, you little runt! Leave him alone, Wilksy. Jenkins was the one who pushed him, why should I get it? He should get some too. We fucked you up! Show me oh, what man. you got. Nihilist, I fuck you! Yeah. Just like twitchy and weird. The weird thing is, of all the people in this movie, the guy with the glasses, I think his name's like Weasley or Wesley or whatever his name is, he's the only person who's gone on to do other things. Really? Yes, and he's still an active act, like acting right now. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> But so he bumps into these guys and they like start beating him up. Or they get him calling him a runt and they he's keep, twice, he's their, twice size. their size. Yeah. Pay for that, you little runt. Uh, and then he keeps talking to the cane guy again a little bit more after they kind of scuffle. And the cane guy then goes from doing Obi Wan to doing the Emperor. You should go now. So then he finally gets to the woods, <laughs> right? I think. <laughs> And oh yeah, because he gets to the woods and he's running around with his wooden swords that we now know the name of because of the opening title and card. He, yeah, oh god, he just this <laughs> where he's just running around aimlessly in doing the woods, nothing, doing nothing like, with two swords. He's like swatting at trees with them as he runs by. He's like, yeah. Hitting a branch. <laughs> I just have this image of two gun posters with Bakus now. <laughs> yeah, I, I did that. I did the two sticks. Yeah. I did that on one. Oh, for Stick Fighter, stick fighter. I did it, yeah. Um, I'll just put that one back in. Uh, but yeah, he's running around with these two swords, and he's just like hitting uh, hitting trees and stuff. And at one point, he has them on his back like Leonardo, like yeah. crossed <laughs> and just running around. Uh, and then he finds a random weird like lean to little shelter thing yeah the and then he's and then it, this is where his mind goes to a six year old he literally turns into a six year old he's like picks up his sword, his sword he's and like, treats it like a gun he's like yeah 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 it's like dude you're like a 30 something year old man what's going on here two snipers on the top bridge one running on the end of you did two more of them see ya <laughs> you didn't think I see you huh? 
It's the woods, Kyle. They're getting to him. I guess so. <laughs> it's so strange. Um, and then it collapses on him for some reason. Because ghosts, yeah. I think. I don't. I don't know. And he's like, oh, oh, that could have been me. I could have died. It, yeah. Okay. Sure. Right. You're not from Weldon, are you? What were you doing talking to him about? And then he sees actual ghosts. There's some kids. I think they're real. The kids are I think real. These kids are real. The first two kids, but then there's a kid later that's a ghost. Um, and then there's a pretty lady, and she's a ghost because she's one of. And I don't know the dynamics of that family, and we'll get to that. And who was who? The, the murdered family, because there's two girls. For the longest time, I thought there was one. There's two different girls. Yeah. And I don't know if one of them was like the mom and one's a daughter or if they're sisters. I have no fucking idea because they look the same age to me. Then he, uh, so he runs it. He's chasing this girl or whatever. Um, and this is when I realized I was not nearly high enough to watch this movie when he's, he's, but she's got the, she's got the red scarf tied to her waist. So we know something's going on with her. And then he like stalks her through the woods and then she just disappears. Very, he's, if he's trying to be inconspicuous, he's doing a god awful job. He's literally just, I, the guy looks like Bigfoot just like stumbling <laughs> through the fucking woods. It, it, his level of hiding is like me trying to hide behind this mic yeah. and it's like. He's a and she yeah, definitely, it's, it's, yeah, it's ridiculous. But I, I see you right there. <laughs> yeah, but she walks behind a tree and disappears. <laughs> and then the bad guys, we keep cutting back to them randomly. And at one point they're walking down the street and uh, the, the guy with the glasses throws some trash on the ground. And this was a very confusing scene initially because he throws some trash on the ground and the main bad guy says, Hey, don't shit on my lawn. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, you're, lo you're on the side of a highway. What is happening? And then we find out he lives right there. Right there. Yeah, and... And but they're you know they're bad guys with a heart of gold because they're worried about the environment. Yeah, well no, it's because it's his lawn. But then he says, "I wish I could get rid of this road." Yeah, for and some just reason. Destroy it. Yeah, and he says, "I could because his dad." So the main bad guy, his dad is like a higher up in the city. I really should get rid of this bloody road. Yeah, like they're really gonna do that. It's been here forever. The council are in my father's pockets. They'll do whatever I ask them to. But I love, he goes, I want to get rid of this road because then I could walk right from my house to the woods. Tear up the road, throw it out some grass, then I can go from my house to the forest. There's not a single car on that road the entire scene that we see that. Also, why do you want to go to the woods? And he doesn't because the guy says, like, you haven't been in the woods since that thing that happened a while ago. Well, what's the point? She haven't been in there since... Well, you know. I'll go there or not. It's my business. <laughs> what? What is going yeah, on? It's, and you're like, I don't know. Okay, I guess we'll get there. But uh, yeah, you're right. It is real hard to walk from point A to point B when there's a, an empty road in the way. It makes it real tough. Yep. Damn that level ground. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. Still say I could have had him, though. Rock boy. Do you know, Wilkesy should be a lot more like Jenkins seen and not heard and you wouldn't get into so much trouble and then we uh this is where we start getting inklings of what happened where the sensei he calls up the sensei on the phone and they're talking he's like i want to come home john does i mean you can't john your mind will play tricks on you you need to focus ignore everything unless it's right you know i could have done all this stuff in the park in london instead of coming all this way you won't find peace in london you will find it there. Right. Yeah, you just come home. You're a grown-ass man. He just yep. asked you to go do this. You don't have to. Um, but he's like, I want to come home. And he's like, oh, you keep training or whatever. And then after he hangs up the phone, he like has a flashback to the inside of a house. <laughs> and then he pulls like a, a, a folder out of an envelope or out of a 
a, a drawer and we don't get to see what it is yet but there's like a picture of like a girl and a boy on it and we're like mm. hmm, what's going on here and then, <laughs> then it cuts back to john in the woods literally just wood fighting wood sword fighting trees yes <laughs> It's wood on wood hate. <laughs> he is. He's just, my favorite thing is he's just running back and forth from one tree to another tree. Just like, oh, snack, 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 oh, snack. Oh. Snack, 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 like what an eight-year-old would be doing in the woods it's so well it makes dumb. sense with the thing earlier yeah it really does <laughs> then he sees a ghost kid and somebody throws a tree branch at him doesn't matter but that's what happens hey you okay where's your mother hey wait hello uh, and then he ends up finding the red scarf. And then this is when things go off the fucking rails. Because the next hour of this movie is just like a fever dream. Yeah. It's, it, there's so many situations where he just wakes up in the woods. It, it reminded me of Neil Breen film of, of Double Down yeah. where he just like things happen and then he wakes up and you're like what is what is reality what is going on and in this moment he has a scarf and he's running through the woods with it and then he just comes up across a, a swing and just in starts this, yes. swinging on it yes Okay, and then the, the, they have like I watched that and I was like this music is fucking stupid and that's the thing the music is like da 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 and then he gets the swing and it's like da 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 but then it like quickly switches yeah, to like just da 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 It's so fucking crazy, and the girl is watching him swing. Like, she's just standing there watching him swing. Katie was watching this part with me, and she goes, I think I know why it's a horror movie. Not because it's scary, but because it fills you with existential dread. And I was like, I think you nailed it, Katie. That's woefully accurate. Interesting. You don't think this is interesting? My father worked his whole life to make this look good, worksy. You insult this, you insult me, you insult my father. Yeah, and then we get a techno training montage. He's like doing chin ups on trees. Again, this is all just not like this is they just went into the woods and shot a bunch yeah, of nonsense. It's a five minute story that they tried to expand into an hour and a half yeah. film. They just spent a whole weekend shooting everything they could think of in the woods and then tried to edit it together and it did not work. I don't know what I was expecting, but it wasn't this from this movie. Yeah. It's very strange. Well, we watched, we, we skimmed through, watched like whatever thing they had. The, yeah. Was there a trailer for it? No, I think I just, I, I just clicked through it and saw like the opening couple minutes where he's like in the town, like talking to the bullies. Let, let me pull up what I said, because I thought it was kind of funny. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I want to do this movie for sure. It's an entirely different fatal deviation. I, I skimmed through it. I said, this looks like a middle-aged dad's midlife deviation. Got him. <laughs> <laughs> This is when I realized my notes mean nothing because, again, this is the second time this happened because this movie is no nothing is happening. It's just like weird random scenes that I was like, my notes are not going to mean anything. Because then, and then it's, it's it's nonsensical. There's yeah. there's nothing to make sense no, of it. No, it, and, and it's like this weird mixture of trying to be symbolic. Mixed with like having trying to have a narrative in a in the way Neil Breen does, yeah. That it just 
doesn't quite work. But this is not as interesting as Neil Breen stuff. Like it and but weird. Also with Neil Breen stuff, like Neil Breen, if all else fails, just either think like the government's bad or there's conspiracy theories or secret agents. Yeah. And this is just like ghosts. Ghosts. Well, I mean, this has an overall plot that I figured out before we get revealed, obviously, which is that just to get lay it out all on the table. We find out that the sensei who sent John to this town used to live there in the woods <laughs> with his wife, daughter and two sons in a limestone building. I. I don't know, but he used to live in the woods, and then one day, the three guys who are current bad guys showed yeah, up and just murdered them, them all. And murder them, yeah. Literally all of them, except for the sensei guy. And then they get off. They they get acquitted. And my favorite moment where they they like reveal that or that our main character finds that out, and we'll get to that later. But he goes into that house, and the way they show it is he picks up one paper and it says "murder" in all caps as the title, and he sets it down. And then he picks up the next newspaper and it just says "acquitted" on caps. That's, That's great. So That's fucking hilarious. <laughs> hey, look who it is, Runt Boy. Let me at him. Steady. Look at them all dressed up. Wasn't I clear earlier? Now this is trouble. Then he he runs into the bad guys again, I think, and oh, they just take his sword from him. Like he's yeah. like, I'll beat you all up, and they just like grab him, and he doesn't beat any of them up because apparently he sucks. <laughs> hey, I need that for tonight. And then he see again. I'm I'm sorry that this doesn't make any sense. It it, it the film just doesn't <laughs> it make just sense. It doesn't have. It, it's just things happen. He it's, sees, it's right up there with Billy Owens, except like there's not as much to talk about. Yeah, that it really because so little happens in the middle of this movie. It's like the beginning part, and then there's the end part where we find out what the story is, and then the middle is just a middle aged dude running around in the woods hitting trees with sticks I yeah that's painfully I don't, I don't know what this is. Uh, but then a giant CG tree falls on him as he finds yeah he, well he found the kid and he's like this CG tree is falling he's like he's trying to get the kid out of the way but that wasn't real that didn't exist no Uh, then he sees a bloody dead version of himself in the kid's fort. Yeah. It's all a fever dream, Kyle. I don't <laughs> understand what... I don't... I... This movie's nothing. Uh... He fights that lady at one point. He fights... I. They're ghosts, but they're physical. Because yeah. he has a sword fight with... They're, they're physical as long as the plot needs yeah. to be. Yeah, and then other times they're not. He sword fights the lady with the katana, and or one of them. It's a different one than the ninja one, I think, because mm -hmm. there's two of them again. It's very confusing. But uh, she has the scarf, and he, like, tri again, how weird this movie is, he, like, trips her to where she lands suggestively on top of him, and yeah. I'm like... Ah. Is he gonna fuck this ghost? Like, what is happening, Kyle? What? I don't understand. Who are you? Take it easy. I'm not a black belt yet. Uh, then he, he runs in, he finds the house where they were murdered, but it's protected by like a time bubble? Yeah, what? He goes back into black and white world 
is it back in time or is it? I, I love, I love that. That's the, that they goes to black and white world. That's back in time. I don't know. Maybe that's what it's supposed to be. I, mean, I think it is. There's like a force field that he like tries to push through, and it like sparkles at him when he tries. It's so fucking. It's stupid, so dumb. Kyle. It's so dumb. Ah! Oh, and then when he goes through the thing, or he passes out at one point from the force field, I think. This is going to sound like I'm literally losing my mind as I try to describe it. Well, you this. are. <laughs> he tries He tries to go through the force field. He, like, passes out, and then he comes to, in a dream world, on a bridge, and everything's red. And I think this is the red canopy they were talking about. And it's him and one of the girls on the bridge. And they're standing there, and they both throw a stick into the stream below them. And then they run to the other side of the bridge and the sticks come out tied together in an X. And I was like, I think that's supposed to mean something, but I don't I don't know what the hell. It's so fucking weird. I, I love that. This just seems to be the tagline for this movie. I think Red that was supposed to be. I think this was supposed to mean something. <laughs> it's, it's truly like, oh, it's fucking wild. Show yourself. Let me who you are. And then there's another guy. Oh, the guy with the facial hair shows up at one point who I think is like the sensei's oldest son or something but he's got villain facial hair yeah. like he, he looks and he like I, it doesn't matter he just matter. points he just points yeah he points right? a lot he does a lot of pointing who are you who's the little boy oh and I gotta talk about this we're gonna get to the end cause I, don't, I can't even explain what's happening but he there's a point in this movie where some shots, I don't know if you noticed this, most of this movie looks terrible. It was shot in 2005 or whatever, yeah. and it looks like it was shot on very cheap cameras, uh, on video. And then every now and then, there's like a gorgeous shot. Did you notice this? I noticed, yeah, I did notice that. There was like, uh, like I think the ending shot of the, the film. The ending shot, yes. Yeah. And then there's a shot in the uh, in the woods. Where's one? And, and they're all of a sudden. So most of it's like on tripod, close up, gross, weird angle. Like just the cinematography is awful. And then all of a sudden, there's like a shot on a dolly. Yeah. Dollying through the woods as our main character walks. The sun is like setting or rising. The shooting through the trees. There's like mist. It's like a whole different fucking movie for one shot. And I'm like, what the fuck was? Which makes me wonder if they shot as like a proof of concept, he got like a real photographer and they went and shot like three minutes worth of stuff. And then we see those few shots because there's the one at the end where the guy with the cane walks down the street. Mm -hmm. And again, the sun is setting and like the trees are like lit up beautifully and it, it just looks great. And there's another one too with the sunset where like the guy on the car and like... It's where there's like a gorgeous sunset in the background. There's a handful of those, but the rest of this is just bland. The rest of it is literally like it's just it, if you if you ever went to film school, the worst student in your film class, they shot it. They shot this movie. Kyle shot this movie. <laughs> <laughs> this place is just a. Pool. I'll get something to clean that up. It broke. The glass broke, but the water. It's still there. Uh, and then we find, like I said, we find out that the f family was murdered in the hut. And my favorite thing about there, the, the uh, other than the newspaper just says murdered in the, that's the, that's the headline is murdered. Oh, and the, the thing off to the side was like rich son or something oh, like that. Oh, that, but then next to the murdered one says forest family killed. And I'm like, forest family? Is that what? Yes. <laughs> forest I, family? I want their last name to be forest. But otherwise, <laughs> yeah. that makes no sense. It makes no sense. Um, but I had to assume... I was wondering if they were some like hippie like p 
polyamorous commune or something because that's what it kind of seems like. Kind of? They're like living in the woods in this weird like uh, stone shack and there's like they're all like the same age and I couldn't figure out the dynamic. Doesn't matter. They all get killed including the little boy. We get we finally get the flashback of them murdering everybody. Mm. And our main character, the main bad guy, kills like most of them. But then he gets to the little kid and yeah. he gives it to the glasses guy. Yeah, and he just like. <laughs> stabs the kid in the fucking face, which is amazing. And I love too, it's so funny, is that like apparently some of those injuries persisted through to ghost time. Yeah. But like not kid, all of the them. The kid's shoulder injury. Yeah, because he falls on the stone and hurts his shoulder. But then, so that that may, that lasts as he becomes a ghost. But the the sword through the face. No, nope. no. Nope. Nope. <laughs> and then he, the sword lady attacks him. This is the part with the newspapers I was talking about earlier. The sword lady attacks him for some reason. <laughs> And this is where he explains that he isn't the person that murdered them. Yes. I'm sorry. I didn't know. So, you are as well. He's like, oh, you thought I killed you. No, I'm just... Wooden sword. Wooden sword. I'm just a guy with a wooden sword. And her sword, when she swings it, sounds like a lightsaber when it hits stuff. Yes. Yeah. I don't want to fight you! Sure. It's, it's also, like, incredibly short. It's not a full katana. I think it's whatever the... You're the weeb here. What is the... Good <laughs> lord. <laughs> I, what do they call it? Yeah, uh, I say... Yeah, you said good lord, I mean, but you know. Wakazashi? Yeah, there well, it Wakazashi is. is shorter than that. I don't God. know. It's See, probably. now I'm even more weeb. <laughs> Maybe it is a katana. Now, for the record, I know most of that through Pathfinder. There you okay? go. There you go. Keep looking! Jenkins, over there. Ah! I'll just play it like mostly in full, but the scene where they, the flashback scene where they murder all of the family is it's really hilarious cool. because yeah, the music is, is not fitting at all. <laughs> This is one of those scenes I was talking about where they're literally brutally murdering this family and it's like a soaring angelic score. Yeah, because it, the, the, the whole idea behind it was they use the angelic sword to, uh, score to be like, uh, this is the past. This is when things were yeah. better. And then their murder is like, we're not, why are we not changing yeah. the audio to be like, yeah. Oh, no, 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 yeah, no, exactly. yeah. no, this is like still like, oh. <laughs> slash stab a kid in the face. <laughs> uh, then one guy gets killed by a tree. Wilksy, don't get too close. What's the big deal? She's just a little girl. Oh, we finally get the final confrontation between the bad guy and the main guy. Mm. It's it's we've already had one, but we get another one. I wanted them to leave. They wouldn't leave. I made them leave. Uh, we find out he killed the family because it's his land and they wouldn't leave. Yeah, basically is like. Oh, okay, cool. Like I thought it would be be more interesting than like this is my land, but no, he just kills them. But yeah, he, f he fights the dude again yeah. and loses again. He loses again. Um, Come on, let's get him. But then is saved by, by a ghost. ninja check. <laughs> Shows up, uh, and first we get a fucking throwing star. <laughs> get out of here! No. A, 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 a shuriken star into his head, and then fake blood comes out. Oh, it's and then CGI. Get a, it's so bad. And we get a close up of it in his head, and they couldn't even be bothered to do a makeup job. It's a CG. The close up still is a CG shuriken in his head with CG blood. Yeah, it it just looks like jam preservatives. Yeah, it's oh, it's so fucking bad. And then a, a CG. Uh, dagger of some sort flies out of the woods and pins the 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 main bad guy to a tree for a second come on <laughs> oh, 
but then he gets away they just stop fighting him because then the bad guy goes through the black and white time bubble yeah it, okay, so he, he goes the bad guy go, Let me say that sentence again. The bad guy goes through the black and white time bubble. <laughs> Continue. <laughs> he finds the house. He knows who this house is. He was here he was before. The, he murdered people so he, there. He, there's a little slot in the door that he lights a piece of one piece of paper, paper <laughs> and throws it in and it sets the whole thing on fire. And it's mostly stone. And it's mostly stone. And it's one sheet of paper. It would smolder on the floor and go out. Like that's not how you yeah. burn a house down. Because like, well, the interior of it, stone floor. And I know how to walls. fucking burn a house down. <laughs> Disclaimer. <laughs> it's good, better, better. It's not endorsed burning houses down. So he burns the brick house down. Thank God this movie is almost fucking over. Uh, and then uh, it's the big fight, and it's very slow and boring. Yeah. They fight again for, like, the third fucking time. Um, very slow and boring. He just, like, they, like, it's so super rehearsed, and it's, it's, uh, it's not interesting. Uh, and then Katana Lady shows up, and our guy's just like, you you take care of that. <laughs> you, yep. I'm leaving. Bye. Later. Literally, and then we cut to a shot of him walking out of the woods with his backpack. Before the fight's even over, he's just like, I'm, I'm getting the fuck out of here. Da, 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 da. Uh, she slices him. She slices him, and he dies. <laughs> but he doesn't die. Because then our good guy gets to the car, and he looks at his watch and goes, Ah! Just in time to get to that tournament. Just can, just, can just get to that tournament in time. And then... Hooah! The bad guy slams against the side of the car. And he just drives off. Well, well he, he runs he, him he, over. He, he just literally murders the man with his car. Yep. Just hits him with his car, but now his car won't start. <laughs> and Obi-Wan Kenobi is watching from a distance like, good. Good Way job. to murder him with your I car. Walk off into the distance. I guess the 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 point here though is that when he murders him with his car and then he can't get to the the tournament now because he does his car doesn't work is that he's learned what truly matters is that boasting in this tournament isn't important but murdering people with your car is. <laughs> Moral of the story, oh, Kyle. <laughs> You're telling me. You're telling me. Matthew. <laughs> I had to remove that every single time. God damn it. It's gonna be bleak. Now they're gonna, gonna come back and be like, "What were they? What are they talking about right now?" They're gonna see this part, Kyle, and they're not gonna see the part from the thing you just said four seconds ago about when. Ma and again, now again, Kyle, see, it just happened again because the thing I just said got cut out. So now they still don't know what we're talking about. This is us talking. <laughs> oh, the ghosts all disappear behind a tree. We get a montage of the pictures. Then the movie ends in the credit rolls. And I don't know what the fuck this was. I was, was happy this was over. Very much. Um, my only other thing, I had one little note in the credit, is that I'm sure it's just like a British thing or whatever. But in the credits, it says... It's got it's going through and one of the credits is Frederick Man About Village. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and then underneath Ruth, Woman About Village. <laughs> oh yes, yes, yes. <laughs> great. That's uh, great. so yeah, fucking bad man. Yeah, it's um awful. This movie, it has its moments for sure. It's just a little too boring. Like some of the ADR, the acting's terrible, the fights are terrible. If the if the middle wasn't as boring as it is, 
it, it is nonsense, and it's like you're like every, every every ten minutes you get something else that you're like what like when he's like strangling himself with a swing you're like what is happening? But it's not interesting enough. It's a little too boring in the middle uh, that you just like all right let's let's move on. Um, but it has some really truly great moments, and I understand why it was recommended. I just don't think I could recommend the whole. Yeah, thing. it's it's just, it's just. It's there's too boring. Not, it's, there's just not enough there. Yeah, it's just too boring. It's just too much stretched over. Again, if this was a 45 minute movie instead of an hour and 25 minute movie, I think it could. Be it fun. has a lot of. It has a lot in the formula to be oh, a good bad film. Absolutely. It's, it's just absolutely. It's, it's running off of a two sentence idea. Yeah, and it's just it's just running on fumes. They stretch the the goodness too far. It's like butter scraped over too much bread. <laughs> <laughs> uh, as always, you can support us on Patreon. Just go to patreon.com slash. Good, bad, or, or GB or BB. Um, and that is how we were able to afford these beautiful cameras oh that you're seeing God, us on now. glorious things. We'll put a still shot in of one of them. Are you in focus? Yeah. Okay, good. Whew. They're new. So there might be some, we might be working out some glitches technically yep. with these new cameras. But uh, they look glorious. They look great. Um, and uh, they, we shouldn't have issues with losing footage anymore because they don't stop every 12 minutes. Yeah. So that, just to explain for everybody always who's like, why is there a stripper? The cameras we used to use before used to stop because of the file format, the way they recorded. Uh, you they were FAT32, so they could only go up to three point whatever, whatever gigs. Which is about 12 minutes yeah. uh, of recording time, and then they would shut off. And if we weren't super paying it, we don't have a crew with us. It's us two in this room. Yes. So if we didn't notice, there would be times where we'd go a little bit longer. Uh, other times they would just, because they were old and shitty, they would just turn off early, <laughs> like even before the toy. So that, they're old cameras. Um, these are both brand new, right out of the box. If you want to know what they are, they are uh, Panasonic GH5s, um, which I like. I shoot, shoot on uh, in the industry a little bit, and I've enjoyed them quite a bit. The um, lenses are incredibly crisp. Yeah, uh, uh, this one, especially the one on mine. We're gonna get yes. another one. I'm, I'm on a 25 millimeter right now. Yours is a 40. Brian millimeter. gave me the crappy one. We're gonna replace that one. <laughs> but yeah, uh, we were able to buy this stuff because of supporters, because of all you people that watch and enjoy our show. So welcome. Thank to you for making all this possible. Yes, uh, and welcome to 2020. Uh, we got a lot of good stuff planned. We're coming up, Kyle. In the 100th episode. Oh, man. I forgot to say what number this was. I think 94. 93. 90, no, no yours is 94. 93 Mine's 93. that you're editing currently. This is 94. And then the next one we're recording is 95. So we're like... We're getting there. We're getting there. We're, we're only a few, uh, couple months away from the big 100. We're gonna, we don't know what we're going to do for it yet, but we're coming up with ideas. So uh, it should be fun. Um, it'll probably just be boring a normal episode. <laughs> <laughs> Can't make any promises. I also have a podcast called This Films Light where we talk about movies that are based on books. When you're watching this one, I don't know because recording so gosh darn far ahead that I'm... Um, Christmas with the Cranks we did at one point. That's our Christmas episode. That's based on a book. That's based on a John Grisham book. I read it in a health magazine. And how long are you going to be like this? Well, this is temporary. And then you got all your wrinkles are gone. Uh, Kyle, uh, you can you can Kyle streams on Twitch way more than yeah. I do. If you go to Twitch, you uh, know Brian has more followers. Do I? <laughs> yeah. I, I, I well, I, I have I used to stream more. I just haven't lately. Everybody needs to come to my Twitch streams and follow me, so I can have more followers than Brian. It's just uh, GB or BB underscore Kyle or yes. Kyle underscore GB. no GB GB or BB underscore Kyle. And same for me, GB or BB underscore Brian. Uh, so yeah, that's it for this episode, the first episode of 2020. As always, thank you. You're the best. We love you. Keep watching movies. Just maybe not Red Canopy. And actually, no. Just don't watch Red Canopy. <laughs>